What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how I rescue a plant that doesn't look the best. So this is my ficus benjamina. It is commonly referred to as the Benjamin tree, the Benjamin ficus tree, the weeping fig, and the weeping Chinese banyan. So it's got a plethora of different commonly used names. Alas, it is a ficus benjamina, uh, and I've known it as a really sensitive kind of diva tree that always loses its leaves. Uh, growing up, my mother had one, um, and what the distinct memory I have of it is how it would lose leaves uh, at the drop of a hat. Somebody would walk by and the next thing you know, half the leaves would be on the ground. This tree is very, very, very sensitive, or at least it appears to be that way. Now, this tree is kind of native to around India on down to northern Australia. So it's pretty much at home in the temperate kind of tropical regions uh, that get really nice sunlight, great humidity, a good amount of rain. Uh, and then when we move them into our houses, uh, they really don't get those same conditions. And this tree always responds by dropping its leaves and making everybody think that it's pretty much dead. So the best way to actually keep this tree from actually dropping all of its leaves is to really best uh, recreate the environment that it comes from. Uh, and that will kind of in turn help you uh, to keep your tree looking its best. Now I want to do this kind of video today because I ordered this online and uh, when I got it, I guess the person didn't ship it first class or anything like that. So they stuffed it into a small box and you can tell that all of its leaves, when I got it out, were pretty much bent almost at like a 90 degree angle. And it's since straightened out a little bit, uh, but unfortunately this week I have been extremely busy. Uh, so I basically just left him in this little Tupperware bowl and you can see he's dropped a leaf right there. Uh, and I'm sure by the end of this video, it will look like he uh, doesn't have any leaves at all. Uh, but this tree is an evergreen, so it's not supposed to be losing its leaves at the drop of a hat. Uh, but I wanted to show you what you could do, say that you get a plant uh, in the mail and it doesn't look its best. Oftentimes people want to send it back or just throw it away or what have you. But you don't always have to do that. Trees can uh, be pretty tough uh, individuals and be able to bounce back fairly easy, especially your sensitive trees like the ficus benjamina. Uh, so don't give up hope and think, oh, all is lost, he lost all its leaves, uh, it's over and done, and uh, just throw it away. You can actually kind of help them out and help them uh, go ahead and grow more leaves uh, and look their best later on and end up thriving uh, in your home. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this and I figured this might be the best video to do that just because this is a very sensitive plant and as I said before it will probably lose a lot of leaves and not look its best but that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to throw him away and start over. So what you should first do uh, whenever you get a plant like this in the mail and it doesn't look its best uh, is immediately go ahead and take it out of the box and if there's any plastic wrapped around the roots go ahead and remove all of the plastic uh, and set it down into a container and give the plant water immediately now you don't want to go ahead and flood him with water and then end up drowning him uh, instead you want to go ahead and make sure that you pour water all the way around the circumference of the root mass uh, to ensure that a good majority of all the roots, if not all of them, are going to go ahead and get some water. Now, in this large Tupperware bowl, uh, there is no drainage hole, so water is not going to be able to run away freely. So you have to go ahead and take into consideration that what you give it is probably going to be enough uh, for a day or so. Like I said, typically whenever you put a uh, pot uh, together for a plant, it's going to have a drainage hole, or it's supposed to have a drainage hole. Uh, but if you have a cache pot similar to the one that I'm getting ready to put this in, you can tell there is no drainage hole at the bottom. 
Uh, instead, it does have this saucer with a drainage hole right here uh, to let water kind of come out into the uh, reservoir right here. Now, that doesn't let it freely run away, so it actually will keep it in here and water uh, will continue to seep back into the pot uh, because it has nowhere to go. So that's why I always say if you have a saucer underneath or a cache pot, make sure you drain it after about 20 minutes. Uh, at the 20 minute mark, that's really all the plant is going to be able to absorb all that water and hold on to it. And any water left from that 20 minute mark is water that's really not going to be needed. Uh, and if you keep it in there, uh, it's not able to go ahead and get rid of all the excess and could end up drowning. So always make sure that you keep an eye out for that and let the excess water drain away freely, even if you do have to help that plant out. Now, as I said, they are native to around the tropical areas down around the equator. Uh, so they do like a decent amount of sunlight typically uh, in nature they only get to be about 60 to about 100 feet so that's really not tall for a tree and most likely this tree species is classified as large shrub and a small tree indoors the ficus benjamina rarely tops about six or seven feet so like in nature you see it a lot taller than that but as i said indoors they rarely uh, go over about six feet tall so in nature they're typically found underneath the canopy uh, to where they don't get a whole bunch of light it's mostly kind of bright shade and some direct sunlight uh, so indoors that needs to be met as well uh, you could sit it in a south facing window, but make sure you scoot it back a couple of feet. Uh, basically, you want it to have ample morning sunlight and then protection from the sun uh, during the afternoon or the hottest part of the day. You could also set it in a southeast or a south facing window if you have like some shades or some curtains to kind of filter out a majority of that light. Uh, but some direct sunlight is okay but you always want to acclimate your plant for a couple of days before you just go ahead and take him and set him inside. Now this plant was in a package for around about two weeks. It might have been a two weeks and a day, somewhere around 15 days. Uh, so that's not the best ideal for a plant. Uh, fortunately, he was packaged really well. I should say his roots were packaged really well because they were wrapped up in plastic. And as we know, plastic is really good for preserving things and keeping things uh, kind of in check. Uh, it doesn't let a whole bunch in and it doesn't really let a whole bunch out either. So it'll keep the water in there around the roots to keep them hydrated for that lengthy uh, shipping process. Uh, but it doesn't do well for the rest of the tree, uh, especially at keeping it warm or giving it any sunlight or any fresh air or anything of that nature. So that's why as soon as you get the uh, plant, you want to take it out of the package and let it stretch out some, uh, especially around the roots because they'll go ahead and wrap that in really tight to hold in a bunch of that soil around the roots and then hold on to that water around there too to kind of keep it moist and happy and not let it go thirsty uh, during its long travel. So immediately you want to take it out of the package and then remove the plastic around the uh, root mass so that you'll let the roots kind of get some more fresh air uh, and get rid of all that uh, water that's built up in there and let it kind of drain away freely too and then thereby letting your roots kind of breathe. So I sat him in here for about three days uh, and today is uh, day four. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't get him to stretch out a little bit more. Uh, and as I said, you'll notice that some of the leaves are looking a little less than ideal, uh, but that is kind of typical whenever you get a plant uh, in the mail. Uh, but uh, I've read some of these comments on this and I can see that a lot of people think that, oh, well, just because it's bent over, uh, a whole bunch of damage is done and the plant's probably gonna die. That's not necessarily true. As the common name suggests, it is a weeping fig. Uh, so the branches are really thin and they are pretty pliable. So uh, they will be bent a little bit but they can straighten back out as well so uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can't remove him I've gone ahead and sanitized and cleaned out my new container for him also uh, 20 points if you can figure out what video or what plant this container is from continuing on with the sense of 2020 and how crappy of a year it's been I went ahead and lost one of my favorite plants this year uh, to some bacterial infection uh, so if you can figure out which one this is from bonus points for you. Now, uh, so I said earlier, you want to kind of best recreate its environment in your home to actually give your plant a little bit more chance for success and uh, to help it thrive better. Now those conditions would be a decent amount of sunlight, 
uh, a good amount of humidity and a decent amount of water to match that humidity and really well kind of nutrient rich organic uh, draining soil. So soil that holds on to a little bit of water but not much. Soil that is able to go ahead and uh, release the excess water uh, and with the soil the pH needs to be around 6.0 on up to about 6.5 so they can take a little bit of a uh, <laughs> neutral soil but they do like it to be a little bit acidic though not much any kind of soil that's made for azaleas or roses you want to stay away from that because that's formulated to be a little bit better with the uh, acidity uh, as you know azaleas and roses and blueberries and stuff of that nature really like a uh, acidic soil so this tree likes a little bit of acidity in its soil though not much if it gets too much acidity in there uh, the plant won't be able to absorb the right amount of nutrients and uh, if left unchecked for a good amount of time the plant probably will die so as I always say you want to check your soil's acidity around once maybe twice a year just to see uh, if it's okay and writing the parameters that it needs to be because if it is too acidic or too alkaline the tree probably especially being as uh, sensitive as this one won't hold on too well now I'm gonna go ahead and get my tools out to make sure that I can go ahead and uh, help this tree out and remove some of its excess soil so as always I sanitize and clean my uh, pruning utensils and also I have a pot underneath the table to catch any debris and keep from making a huge mess but as we know gardening will always be a messy endeavor so good luck all right now i always say i'm going to do this and i always forget before i do it but before we start shaping this plant up and getting it ready for its new home let's get his new home ready for him uh, that way i'll be able to go ahead and set the prune plant down in there and he'll be happy so as I said, you always want to make sure it's really, uh, the soil is able to drain freely. So I always use my miracle Grow cacti, citrus, and uh, succulent mixture because of all the uh, sand that's in there that will help the water drain away. So I'll probably fill up about a quarter of the pot, maybe almost half with this cacti soil. That way any water that comes into co uh, contact with this will be able to drain away relatively quickly instead of holding on to it and suffocating the roots or even uh, drowning them. I'll go ahead and lightly tamp it down. You're not pushing too hard, but while I'm doing this, I'll create a little divot down in the bottom or in the middle of the soil so that the root mass will have a nice little area to kind of sit. All right, that looks about where I want it. And now we'll take my sensitive little tree here and hold it with one hand and then I will take a little bit uh, of soil and knock it away with my root rake here Now there is a little bit of newspaper that's been wrapped around there to help uh, the roots better survive and hold on to water so it won't dry out during shipping now ficus trees some like to be root bound now, I should tell you that uh, the ficus is a genus of about 900 different uh, trees, shrubs, and vines that belong in the family Moraceae. Uh, most of them are commonly known as uh, figs. And then, as always, most ficus are evergreens, but there are some deciduous trees uh, that don't live in the tropical areas. So this one is an evergreen, and it's not supposed to lose a whole bunch of its crown or its leaves but I know that people that have this tree always say that these trees will drop leaves for no reason at all all right so I've knocked a good little bit off and then a little bit more is gonna fall and that's fine so to give the plant a little bit more room in its pot though not much as I said this guy likes to be a little root bound I will go ahead and trim any roots that appear to be over three inches long and I'm just going to eyeball it. It's not like I'm going to have a tape measure or anything. Remove something that looks to be a little bit long and lanky. And as you can tell, my pruning shears aren't cutting the best, so I need to go ahead and sharpen them. All right. Now I've got the root mass about where I want it. And he's dropping some more leaves, which is to be expected. Next, I'll get out some cocoa pour to help get the uh, acidity of the soil where I want it. 
So I'll go ahead and mix that in, which I should have done previously. So I'll go ahead and mix it all up again with my hands. And then I will go ahead and raise it up on the side and bring the divot back. And I'll grab it and set him down in there to see if that's about where I want him. And it is. So I will go ahead and cover a little bit of the roots just with some cacti and citrus soil. All right, now that's good. And then as you're adding it in, always tamp it down. We wanna tamp it down to uh, secure the plant in its new home so it won't be swerving and swaying every time he's moved. And then tamping the soil down will get rid of any air bubbles that may be in there uh, when we add new soil in. And I'll get a little bit more cocoa core just to kind of go around the circumference of the root mass. Since it will be an indoor tree with me, I will go ahead and add the indoor potting mix from Miracle Grow. All right, now I've got the soil about where I want it, and with about every handful of dirt, I'll go ahead and tamp it down some. And then when you get to the top, you want to compact it pretty well. Not enough to break any roots or any stems of the plant, but just enough to make sure that the plant is uh, secure in its new home and that uh, it won't bang around too hard, but will be able to support itself in there. If you leave the soil too loose, you will uh, won't provide any security for the plant and then any root, uh, any air bubbles, will probably be in or around the roots there and that will in turn wreak havoc on your plant uh, and if left unchecked it will kill your plant. So the final thing to do would be go ahead and water him. So to ensure that I get rid of any other air bubbles down in the soil, I'm gonna make sure I water the plant all the way around to help remove any other air bubbles that tamping may have missed. And then I'll go ahead and add just a little bit more soil on top and then he looks like he might be okay. So, as I said earlier, these guys like a decent amount of light. Uh, they do come from around the tropics. Uh, typically, they do receive kind of filtered light. So you don't want something too bright and too direct all day. Like I said, uh, ample morning light and then shade during the uh, afternoon is best for this plant. Uh, but with him, mine, in the winter time, I'm gonna go ahead and put him underneath the LEDs uh, and then I'll give him the right amount of light uh, for the right duration that he'll need. And then I won't have to worry about him burning any leaves or anything like that. And as you can tell, the stems around here have been really compacted and compressed, but with time, they'll be able to kind of spread out a little bit better and look even better still. With humidity, they like pretty moderate to a little bit high. I'd say around 50% uh, and up is usually ideal. So I'll have mine sitting pretty close to the humidifier. Uh, they don't have too much in the way of pests, except for like your aphids, scale, mealybugs, things of that nature, your typical indoor plants and whatever they struggle with. And as far as anything with uh, disease, typically uh, overwatering is the leading cause of death for these guys. So uh, any kind of root rot uh, will come from that. So you gotta watch how much water you give them, especially in a pot like this. But other than that, I do wanna let you know that they are considered rather invasive species. So uh, the USDA zone for these are around nine and 10. So if you live in like Southern California or Florida, you may have to be careful uh, because their roots are really invasive too. They, if left unchecked, they can put down really deep roots uh, that can end up messing up any kind of uh, utility lines or any kind of drains or uh, pipes. And then a lot of them actually do have really nice kind of uh, buttressed stems and roots that'll come up and crumble uh, driveways and curbs and streets. Uh, so if you do plan on planting one of these around your house, make sure you scoot it about 20 feet away from the house, any other buildings or any other trees, uh, because with their roots, they are really invasive uh, and they can be really costly if uh, you do have any problems of them burrowing into any pipes or utility lines or any kind of uh, concrete from buildings or roadways or anything of that nature. 
So make sure you do not plant them next to your driveway or your home or any kind of street. Like I always say, plant prudently. And with this guy, uh, you really want to make sure you follow that advice uh, because they will uh, tear up a bunch of stuff too. Now, I'm not telling you that to frighten you away from this plant. Uh, I'm telling you that just to be careful uh, so that you don't have any problems in the future. Uh, but make sure you do give them plenty of space to spread out uh, because they can be uh, a little bit invasive. Uh, especially as they get older. Now, they are toxic plants too, so if you have any kind of little ones running around that like to put things in their mouth, uh, as we know, they do drop leaves rather easily. Uh, be very careful of that, and if you do have any kind of pets, a bird or any kind of dog or cat, horses even, uh, these are toxic. Uh, you should know that whenever you handle them, you should be wearing gloves, especially because when the, steves, the stems and the leaves break, uh, they do emit a little bit of a yellowy or a white sap that is also toxic uh, and cause, can cause irritations to the eyes and skin as well. So after you handle your plant or if you prune it, make sure you are wearing gloves and you wash your hands uh, because they are toxic plants. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about with this plant is some of its different varieties that it comes in. There is the Ficus Benjamina Midnight, and they do have kind of dark uh, curly leaves on that one. So that is a, a really kind of different, unique looking ficus tree also. And then they have Ficus Benjamina Judith, uh, which has kind of small green leaves with a yellow border around them too. And then there's Ficus Benjamina Starlight that has the green leaves with a uh, variegation pattern on that. Then there's Ficus Benjamina Danielle, which has just kind of a rich green leaf uh, that's not too dark, but it's kind of uh, similar to mine. And then there's Ficus Benjamina Exotica, which has rich green leaves, uh, similar to the one I have here. So there is a bunch of different variations to this tree some that come with green leaves some that come with variegations some that come with smaller leaves and some that come with darker leaves so if you are into the ficus tree and uh, you do want to get one check out the different variations that come with this species uh, because there are just several different ones uh, I really want to get the starlight or the variegated one next and see how that looks I've seen a lot of different pictures of them and they really do look cool now I know a lot of you will see the artificial trees that look similar to this one uh, and those are okay they are better suited for those who can't garden uh, and don't have a whole lot of light in their home or don't want to put up with the fussiness of the tree but I know my parents had a bunch of them and my grandparents did as well and then you'll see a whole bunch of them in yard sales and uh, different kind of stores but yeah they will sell a lot of these artificial trees in shopping malls and strip malls and uh, peddlers malls even uh, but uh, they did come from around the 80s and 90s uh, in accordance with this tree right here so they do look really cool uh, but again those are for those of you who don't want to garden and don't want to mess around with this fussy tree uh, but if you're like me and you have been told that you can't grow something or you can't do something I'm gonna do it and just show you that I can so I did get it off to a little bit of a rough start with him but I think I can still save him he does have a lot of new growth on him and I've given him a nice uh, decent amount of sunlight to kind of uh, get him to stretch out some and a good amount of humidity and water and it looks like he's gonna be okay uh, but I will do an update video on him to show you to see if anything has helped or not but who knows I think he'll be fine I'm hoping I'll stretch out a little bit more and release some of these leaves that have been trapped on the inside part here that look rather unsightly but only time will tell now the last thing I wanted to say about this plant is the leaves do get a little bit dusty and if that does happen all you need to do is use uh, one part lemon juice to about four parts of warm water and then uh, get you a washcloth and go over the tops and bottoms of the leaves uh, and wash it with that solution. That'll help clean the leaves off and leave them a little bit shinier too. Uh, so about once a month or every other month I will go ahead and wash the leaves off to make sure that the plant is getting the right amount of light uh, and keeps it clear. But that's really all I wanted to say about this plant. Uh, while you're at it, go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever had any kind of success or failures with the Ficus Benjamina. And let me know what your favorite variety of them is. I like this one, but I would have to say I am looking forward to getting the variegated species because uh, I think that would look a lot better, especially right next to this one. So while you're at it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. And don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.